Following on from the video on AQA's advice on how to use a calculator in the exam, we now have an example of a fully justified question where we need to show justification for each step of our method. Let's take a look at the question. A company is designing a logo. The logo is a circle of radius four inches with an inscribed rectangle. The rectangle must be as large as possible. The company models the logo on an XY plane as shown in the diagram. So we have the diagram here. We've got a circle with center zero zero center at the origin and the rectangle inscribed inside it. We must use calculus to find the maximum area of the rectangle. And here we are fully justify your answer, which means we need to show justification, a reason for doing each step of our working. We need to make that nice and clear for the examiner. So where do we start? Well, we need to find some sort of equation to represent the area of the rectangle because that's what we're interested in finding out and then interested in finding what the maximum area should be. So let's think about this length that's going from the Y axis to the circumference here. We'll just label that as X, that's some length here X. And this length that goes from that point up to the X axis will be some length Y. So we've got X, Y. If we wanted to think about the full width of the rectangle that we have here, well, that's going to be two X and the full length or height of the rectangle here, that's going to be two Y. So if we put those together in an expression for the area of the rectangle, it's two X times two Y, which is four X Y. So we're interested in finding the maximum area. At the moment we have two unknowns. So in order to help us resolve that, what we're going to introduce is the equation of the circle. So the equation of the circle, we know that the center is zero, zero, and we also know that the radius is four. So the equation of the circle is going to be X squared plus Y squared equals four squared. That's just following the general equation of a circle. Now, essentially what we have here are two simultaneous equations. If we rewrite the equation of the circle in terms of Y, then we can then substitute that into our area equation. The only unknown will then be X, which we can then go on and solve. So let's rearrange the circle equation for Y as the subject. Y equals the square root of 16, that's four squared, minus X squared. So we've rearranged that in terms of Y. And so therefore what we can do then is substitute that into our area equation. Area equals four X square root 16 minus x squared. So that's just substituting the y for our rearranged circle equation there. So we're thinking about maximizing this area. And so from our knowledge, we should know that for a maximum point, the derivative is going to equal zero. So for our maximum, dA over dx is going to equal zero. Now from this particular point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find some results on the calculator. Everything we've done so far has got us marks and has been completely in line with justifying our answer. But this next little bit I'm going to do isn't actually going to yield us any marks. So it's just to show you really that you have to be careful. It is possible to find a solution, hopefully the solution, via the calculator from this point onwards, but that that wouldn't give you any of the marks. Where it might be useful is it might be useful as some sort of verification so that when we do our fully justified answer, we can go back and check that we've got some sort of corroboration with the results that we got from our calculator. So I'll just show you how straightforward this could be potentially on a calculator. We need to find the derivative, so I'm going to use d by dx. I'm going to input the area equation here, so it's 4x square root 16 minus x squared. And then for the next bit, because we're going to go on and use the solver, for x, I'm just going to say x equals x, because we want to solve for x. Navigate right so that we have the large cursor, and it's alpha equals, and then it's zero. Shift and solve, and we want to solve for x. Press equals to confirm. And here we have our value of x. It's given as a decimal approximation, 2.8284 to four decimal places. I'm just going to write that down and make a note of that. So at the moment, I'm assuming, rightly or wrongly, I'm assuming that this is going to be the value of X that is going to give us a maximum area. 
So what I could do is to, now that X is stored as this value, is to go back to the area formula and input that using X to find out what the maximum area is. So 4X square root 16 minus X squared. That's given 32. So I'm just going to make a note of that as well, 32. Now this could possibly be the maximum area. Now this little bit that we've done so far, again, just from where we decided that dA by dx equals zero, everything after that has given us no mocks. But I'm just showing you that you can use your calculator to be able to do this. So you need to be very careful where you choose to use your calculator. Now I'm not saying that this bit isn't useful because what I'm going to do is to just put a little bubble around this, just square this off and I'm going to use this as verification for when we've done our fully justified answer. Now hopefully this is right, hopefully this has given us the correct results. We haven't really gone through the full method so we can't be 100% sure. If we get these results when we do our justified method then hopefully we've gone along with the right method and we've got a correct answer. So let's just rewind from where we decided that for a maximum point dA by dx equals zero. Well what we need to do is now manually find dA by dx using a non-calculator method. Well, we have two functions potentially here multiplying together 4x and square root 16 minus x squared. So what we need to do there is to use the product rule to differentiate these functions. So I'm going to use u and v to represent them. u is going to be 4x and v is going to be, well, I'm just going to write this in index form now, 16 minus x squared in brackets and that's to the power of a half representing the square root let's differentiate so du by dx equals 4 and dv by dx a little bit more tricky that's going to be a half times 16 minus x squared in a bracket to the power of minus a half taking one away from the power but we mustn't forget that we have a function within the brackets there of negative x squared so we need to multiply it by the derivative of that so multiply by negative 2x and writing dv by dx more simply minus x over square root 16 minus x squared so let's put these together now for dA by dx it's v times du by dx so that's four times and I'll put it back in its square root form square root 16 minus x squared and then it would be plus but ultimately this is going to be a negative because we've got dv by dx being negative x. So it's plus minus 4x times negative x over square root 16 minus x squared. So that becomes minus 4x squared over square root 16 minus x squared. And we can simplify this further by putting it together as one term. So dA by dx more simply if you multiply it by a common denominator there square root 16 minus x squared uh, we get 64 minus 8x squared over square root 16 minus x squared so that is a more simple version of our derivative dA by dx now we did say that for a maximum point dA by dx equals zero so therefore 64 minus 8x squared all over square root 16 minus x squared is going to equal zero and this zero is going to come from the numerator. We don't want to get involved with dividing by zero. So therefore we can say 64 minus 8x squared equals zero. Potentially you could use your calculator to get the result from this point. We've got enough evidence, but I'm just going to work it through. If we solve this, we get x equals square root eight, which is two square root two, two root two as a more simple third. And just one thing to note is obviously took the square root, it could be plus or minus to square root two, but we're going to use the positive because we know that it's going to represent a length. So we've got positive two square root two. Incidentally, as a decimal, this is 2.8284 and so on. So that matches the result that we got from the calculator. So that's good, that's good confirmation. We're now assuming that two square root two is going to give us, if we put that in as our x, into the area equation that's going to give us our maximum area but the key question is how do we know it's a maximum we know it's a stationary point because we made it equal to zero or the uh, dA by dx equal to zero how do we know that it's a maximum well we need to test the nature of this particular turning point and the best way of doing this is if we know that x is 2.828 and so on is to choose a value a little bit less than x and a little bit more than x and test out what the gradient is whether it's positive or negative 
for those particular values of x. So I'm going to choose a value a little bit less than uh, the x that we want. So I'm going to say x equals 2.8. Let's find out what the value of the derivative is where x equals 2.8, a little bit smaller than our x value for the maximum. Um, I'm actually going to use the calculator and the derivative here to help me out, uh, which you can do. You can freely use your calculator here, or if you want, you can use your dA by dx equation uh, and substitute the value into there if you want. I'm going to use the differentiator on the calculator. Let's have a look what we've got. So d of dx of, well, this is because the calculator is going to do the differentiation for us. It's the original area equation 4x square root 16 minus x squared, where x is, and we're choosing a value of 2.8 here. So that gives us a value of 0 0.448. So I'm just going to say when x equals 2.8, dA by dx equals 0 0.448. Let's try a value a little bit above the 2 root 2. Well, let's go for 2.9, x equals 2.9. So I'm just going to go back and just alter this to 2.9. Keep the same equation in there, press equals. And our derivative now is minus 1.19. So I'm just going to make a note of that when x equals 2.9 dA by dx equals minus 1.191, let's say. So the most important thing that we've got from here is that before our stationary point, the gradient is positive, and then we've got our stationary point uh, when x is 2 root 2, and then a little bit above that, we've got a negative gradient. So we know it goes positive, turns, and then goes to negative. Well, that would represent a maximum point. So we've got evidence there, justification, that we've got an x value for a maximum point. So again, we've used that calculator to support us there, but we've actually provided a method or reasoning that is non-calculator based. So all that's left now is to work out our equation for the area. And if we use two root two, we've got area equals four times two root two as our x, multiplied by square root 16 minus two root two, squared if you work that through you can use the calculator to work that out if you want to or you can do it manually i'd probably recommend the calculator just in case there's any arithmetic errors you might accidentally make there but that's going to equal 32 which then corresponds with the result that we got from the calculator earlier on so there we go we've got the same answers as the calculator gave us but we've done it with a fully justified method here so we're showing evidence all the way which is what the exam board is looking for in these types of questions. So there we go. I hope that's made that a little bit clearer as to why you need to show as much working as you can to show each step and justify why you're doing each thing. And obviously one of the key things there is showing that it is a maximum, that our stationary point is a maximum. That could easily have been missed out there. So you've just got to be very careful. And again, nothing wrong with getting some results from your calculator, just boxing them off so that we know that they're just there, maybe even labeling them as a calculator check or something like that, just so that we can then go back and check our results with what the calculator got from our fully justified answer. Don't forget to subscribe for future videos. But that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time on the Calculator Guide.